to uh, talk a little bit about the practical uh, uh, aspects of uh, of how the act will work, both for uh, well for developers, for unit holders, and financiers. Um, and then uh, we will leave some time aside to answer questions. I'm sure there'll be quite a lot. And we've received a number in advance by email, which we'll try and go through as well. Um, I encourage all our guests to use the chat function uh, on uh, the, the webinar uh, at the bottom of your screen. Please, as we go along, input your questions and comment, and we will try and take those uh, uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, if there's any burning issue you have in, a, in, in, in while the presentation is going on, uh, please also uh, uh, insert the comment and we'll see if we can uh, answer that as we go along or at the end. Uh, without much further ado, we, we have about an hour, although we'll, we'll be happy to stretch a little bit more if people want to ask a few questions at the end. Uh, but without much further ado, I will hand over to Alex to start the presentation. Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Paras, for that. Um, I will request my partner, Cornelius, to just give an introduction, um, an overview of what we'll be discussing, and then I'll take over from there. CK. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Um, so the, the act we want to discuss today is the Section of Properties Act, uh, which is Act number 21 of 2020, uh, which was assented into law on the 11th of December 2020. Uh, and as we have indicated there, it, the, the commencement date of the act was 28th of December, 2020. Um, a, just a brief uh, on, on what the, the purpose of the act is. Uh, it's, it's basically to deal with the division of buildings, uh, which, uh, which have shared, 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 uh, shared areas. Um, we, we, it, it, it's also dealing with just how, how those common areas are going to be managed uh, between the, the different owners of the properties uh, and basically the management of, of both the units and the common property. That, that's basically what uh, the intention of the act is. Uh, and, and this act applies to uh, all sorts of uh, properties that have uh, shared amenities, but whether it be apartments, flats, maisonettes, townhouses, offices, uh, as, as long as the intention is to uh, confer ownership on different persons uh, uh, sh sharing this, uh, this this common areas, then th then this act will will be um, will be uh, relevant to, to those to those uh, properties. Um, maybe we could move to the next slide, uh, where we wanted to discuss a little bit about the rationale of the act, and I think Paras has touched. A little bit on, on that. Um, whilst whilst you know we, we may have problems with the way the act is being implemented or, or the way the way the government uh, proposes to implement the act, I think uh, we all feel that this um, the, the implementation of the section of properties act was actually uh, very welcome and 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 perhaps uh, it's it's been late in coming. And it, it deals with a number of issues, which we, we've tried to highlight here for, for you. Um, one, one of the biggest issues I think we've had, and you know, developers will know this, uh, property buyers will know this, and I think the banks have been, you know, have been suffering a lot around this area is basically how, how and when shares are transferred uh, from the developer to, uh, to, the, to the unit owners once the development has been done. I think that, there are very few uh, developments you will find where this whole issue has been resolved without, without problems. Uh, this act deals with that. And I think as, as we go along, we can see how it, how it proposes to deal with that, but that's one of the issues that has been sorted out. Uh, there, is, there has been a problem with uh, things like land rent and land rates payments, uh, where property owners were being required to make payments together as, as, as one because the property was just one. Uh, what this act now proposes is that each unit has its own title, uh, and it's it's been it's been assigned a certain land rent uh, payment and also land rates, and therefore each land each house each house owner or unit owner now is able to make their payments on their own uh, without being without having to be dragged together with all the other house owners. Uh, I think one of the other big very big issues that we've had is 
where you get uh, a developer has charged the mother title uh, or, or, or the, the, the main title uh, and is then uh, proposing to be selling properties or so selling units to, uh, to, to, that, to that parties. Um, and I think we've had instances where the banks have wanted to then enforce because the developer has defaulted and you have to now deal with issues of whether, uh, I mean, how do, you, how do you deal with people who bought units and maybe uh, their titles have not yet been issued. Now, the, the good thing with this act is because it, uh, titles are now being issued, I mean, the, the units are being separated and the mother title is now, uh, is, is now being closed and a new title being issued for each, each of the premises. Then you do not have the issue of, uh, it, I mean, you, do, you don't have that issue of how, how you deal with the charge over the mother title. Uh, um, so that that yeah, so that that deals with that with that problem. Uh, there was also issues that we have, you know, in the recent past come across where, you know, if if you have units that exceed fifty in a development, and you are therefore uh, and and you want to incorporate a management company, you had to now incorporate what we call a public company as opposed to a private company. Uh, and the public company itself had it, had its own challenges uh, of, of uh, under the Companies Act. Uh, there are certain things that the public company is required to do under that act, which, you know, it, it has always been felt that in a management company kind of setting, it, is, it would be very difficult to ask uh, house owners or unit owners to comply with those, with those provisions of, of the Companies Act. Uh, Section of Properties Act is introducing a corporation, which is is not uh, which, which 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 is not uh, which does not fall under the Companies Act, and therefore those issues of whether it is going to be a private company or is going to be a public company are no longer uh, going going to be issues going forward. And again, the ministry is trying to digitize uh, the the lands registry. It was always going to be very difficult for the lands registry to digitize for as long as. The registration of units was being done by what we've been doing, which is the, the long-term leases, because it becomes very difficult uh, to, to, to digitize titles that are really not tied to uh, georeference ge ge maps. So somebody cannot very easily go to uh, the, the lands registry platform and be able to see where this property, where, where exactly this property is, because the registration regime. Uh, was 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 very complicated. That again, you know, with this new act, that's that's going to to disappear. One one of the other very big problems I think we've had is um, th there was no standard plans that were being attached to these long term leases. Uh, so you could you would find some people would annex architectural plans to to the long term leases. You would find others would uh, somebody would just put you know a, a plan and just circle and put it in red and say that this is the unit that I am selling. There was, there was no standard way of, disc, of, of uh, describing the property that you are, you are selling to, 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 to these property buyers. And if, if there was ever going to be a dispute as to what exactly was being sold, uh, I, I think it would be very difficult based on, 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 on the sort of plans that were being registered under the Registration of Documents Act. Uh, with with what we have now, uh, you know, these plans are now being prepared by a surveyor, and I guess you know it, it becomes it, it gives it just gives clarity to to exactly what units are being sold, and it's very very easy for one to to see this. Uh, so that 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 basically we, we feel is, is is the rationale behind the section of properties act, and as, as I have said, I think we think it's, it, it's a good it's a good idea. Uh, now, but just very briefly talking about the attempts to operationalize this act, as, as we said, uh, the act came into force on the 28th of December, 2020. Uh, but, but there was a bit of a lull since then uh, until the 7th of May, 2021, when the cabinet secretary for lands uh, put out a notice where she indicated that uh, from I think the 10th of May, um, if, if you wanted to deal with section of properties, you now had to to, to do it uh, through the the new the new act, and, and they were no longer going to accept long term leases, uh, which is a problem in its in, in, on its own. And, and the biggest problem I think was, whilst the act was operational, we do not have regulations. The regulations have still not been enacted, 
they are still going through a process of public participation. So it becomes very difficult to operationalize uh, the act without those regulations. Uh, since then, the Law Society of Kenya Nairobi branch has had a meeting with the minister or the cabinet secretary uh, in an attempt to sort out this problem. Um, and on the 11th, on the 11th of May, we, we got uh, the LSK issuing a notice saying that the act was yet to be, I mean, they, 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 they had struck a deal with the minister that there were certain uh, transactions that were ongoing that would be allowed to be undertaken in the previous regime. And the new, the new transactions would be done under the new uh, section of uh, section of properties act. The section of properties act. Now, as to whether I mean the, the LSK had said that the minister was then going to issue a notice that has not been done. Uh, so you know we, we are still in a bit of a limbo as to how how we should be proceeding. Uh, and as I had mentioned, you know the draft section of properties regulations are out uh, for public participation. We are putting together, and I think most. Uh, stakeholders are putting together comments to the minister. Um, and, you know, again, again, you know, when we have these sort of conversations that we're going to have today, then, you know, some, some of the issues that are going to crop up are issues we definitely would want to pick up with, with the minister. Uh, I, I would want to stop there and maybe Alex can take over. Uh, Alex? Yeah, thank you, Cornelius. Um, uh, welcome everyone once again, and thank you for that overview, CK. I think it was very useful. Um, in order to make um, uh, this webinar fairly efficient, uh, we, have, uh, we have prepared two slides, uh, which we're going to share with you. Basically, one talks about the pictorial overview of registration and conversion, of the registration and conversion process. Um, and this, um, this is what I'll be talking about. Um, so registration of sectional titles. Now, this is an overview that tells you what happens when you register a sectional, a sectional title. Um, basically, the law provides that you should first register a sectional plan. Um, and a sectional plan is basically a georeferenced plan with a bit more detail than what we used to have um, uh, in the architectural drawings that people usually used to attach to long-term leases. Um, Jerry will be talking on talking later on about the, the, the requirements of what the section of plan should should contain. Um, upon registration of a section of plan, what happens is a new title for each unit is created, and at the same time, an owner's corporation is deemed to be established. So those are the two main things uh, you need to take away from from this in terms of what happens when you register the section of plan. Uh, when the new title for each unit is 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 issued, um, it will also include the title deed will include a share in the common areas. So, for argument's sake, if you have ten units, uh, say ten townhouses, um, and you then register a section of plan over your piece of land, say LR number one hundred, uh, the moment you register a section of plan uh, at the lands office. A new title is issued for all the units, unit one to 10. The title deeds includes uh, what they call a one tenth undivided share in the common areas. So, so this is critical because what it means is the common areas are then no longer going to be owned by some common entity, uh, such as the management company or the owner's corporation. Uh, the common areas will be owned uh, jointly um, I would say as tenants in common with each person having uh, an undivided share so that if you have 10 units, then every person owns uh, one tenth of the common areas. Um, then the moment the new title is issued, uh, the entries uh, on the closed title move to the main unit title. So what they'll do is uh, the moment the new titles are issued, they will close the title deed for the main property, which is the old title. So assuming it was 10 acres of one acres, one acre each, then the mother title for the 10 acres is closed. Um, and any entries that were on that main title for the 10 acres uh, will move to each of the unit title deeds. So for argument's sake, if, if there was a charge over the entire main, main title deed of 10 acres, 
and that charge has not been discharged, what would happen is the unit title deeds would include with them an entry that shows that those, those units are charged. And then perhaps as and when the units are sold, uh, there will be partial discharges registered on each of those, on each of those unit titles. Um, and then, as I said, the main title is closed and does not exist anymore. The unit title that you receive for your property will have a tenure that is exactly the same as what was there in, in the mother title. So if the 10 acre piece of land was a freehold title, uh, each unit title will be a title deed for a freehold title. If it was a 99 year lease, if the 10 acre piece of land that we're using as an example was a 99 year lease, then each unit holder will get a certificate of lease, which will be their title deed, and it will be a lease for 99 years as per what was there in the main title. So you're given a new title for each unit. Um, each title contains your proportionate share of the common areas, which is an undivided share. So it's not divided. You can't come and say, this is my portion of the common areas. Uh, each one of you owns uh, an undivided uh, portion of the common areas. Uh, entries that were in the old title move to the new title and the main title is closed and no longer exists. Um, so that's to do with the new title. The second thing that happens immediately you register a section of plan is an owner's corporation is established. Um, this corporation is not a company. And actually the regulations specifically state that it is not regulated by the company that. Uh, the closest uh, I think this comes to is basically uh, a statutory corporation. So for example, um, KWS is, is established under the act, the, K, the, the relevant act. So um, this owner's corporation is established by law um, and all you need to do is register a section of plan um, the owner's corporation, at the time it is registered, there, have, there, there has to be bylaws. And these bylaws are similar to what you'd have in the articles of association of a management company, um, or you, can, you could also add whatever additional bylaws you have as a community or as an estate. Um, and if you don't have your own bylaws, which you, you have established, then there are, there are some um, standard bylaws which will apply as a matter of law. So having bylaws is mandatory. In our view, we think that in addition to what you use to regulate uh, the estate by way of bylaws that are in management companies, articles and, and so on and so forth, we think that perhaps um, the rights and obligations you usually have in a lease, uh, in a long-term lease, to the extent that they talk about what you can and cannot do should also be included in the bylaws. Um, as I said, the owner's corporation does not own any common areas at all. So that's a big departure to what we had initially. The management company used to own uh, the common areas. In this instance, the, the owner's corporation, which is what is replacing the management company, does not own any common areas. Uh, the mandate of the owner's corporation is to undertake management and administration of the estate and the common areas. So in terms of the functions of the owner's corporation, they are pretty much the same as what you had uh, for the management company. Um, each member has one vote. That's at least what the initial bylaws provide. And as I said, the, the owner's corporation is not a company. It's just a creature of the statutes. Um, so that's how you register section or titles. Um, you basically just start the process with a plan and you end up with a title for each unit and an owner's corporation, and that's it. Um, I will then now go into the next slide, which talks about conver the conversion process. Um, this Sorry, just, will largely- uh, Alex, ahead. just a question. If you can, uh, just one thing that comes out of that first slide is, who then owns that reversionary interest and the common areas? Maybe that's what our guests might be interested in. Yeah, thank you, Paras, for that question. So, so uh, the reversionary interest is shared equally among each of the unit holders. Um, and the management company does not hold, uh, sorry, the owners corporations or, or what we now use as management companies does not own the reversionary interest. 
And again, the common areas, as I said, are not owned by the owner's corporation. Uh, each each title deed has a share of the of, of the of the of the common areas. Um, moving on to the next slide, just a minute. Technological challenges. There we are. Um, so this talks about the section, the, the 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 conversion process for leases to section or title deeds. So um, if you already are in an existing um, arrangement where there is common ownership um, of one piece of land with everyone holding a long-term lease uh, to their to their unit, or you hold a share in a company that gives you a right to own and occupy a piece of land. Um, the first thing you need to do is prepare the section of plan. Remember in the previous slide uh, that I just explained, the process of registration of section or titles begins with a section of plan. That's the first step. So, so you need to prepare the section of plan. Um, and in preparation of the section of plan, there are four ent entities or regulatory entities or parties that are involved in that process. You will have a registered surveyor prepare a georeferenced plan for each and every unit and for the entire piece of land showing the location of each and every unit. Um, the surveyor it will be engaged by the owner, uh, the owner being whoever owns the mother title, or if the reversionary interest has been transferred, uh, it is the management company that, that will uh, commence the process of preparing a section of plan. Um, and if the management company doesn't do it, and maybe you have a financier who needs this process to, to take place, then the, the financier has the ability to commence that process. Um, you will then have the survey of Kenya um, because the section of plan has to be approved by them. And as we will, we will see shortly, the county government is also, in, is also involved because they also have to approve uh, the section of plan. So, so the, the conversion process starts with you preparing a section of plan. The second item is you then submit that, register, that section of plan to land's office for registration. Now, before the section of plan is registered at land's office, uh, the county government needs to issue its approval to that section of plan. And basically what they will be doing um, as the county government, they will be checking the, the section of plan that has been prepared versus the approved building plans for each of those units to confirm that the section of plan conforms with the approved building plans. So in essence, what they're trying to achieve here is to make sure that unless you have approved building plans in respect of your project, you probably will not be able to register section of plans. So that's the link between the county government and the Ministry of Lands. Um, and it, it also goes to uh, manage uh, planning, planning issues in, in the country. Um, then secondly, you will need the survey of Kenya to authenticate the section of plan. So this is very similar to what they do with authentication of deed plans when you do subdivisions or consolidation. Uh, they will be taking the section of plan and going ahead to uh, take it to the survey of Kenya for authentication. So that's the second um, the second step in the process. You prepare a section of plan, and then you submit it to land's office for registration. It will only be registered if the county government approves it and says that that plan is in conformity with the approved building plans. And also it will only approve the section of plan if the survey of Kenya authenticates it and says yes, this represents what we have in our records as well. Um, as we discussed in the previous slide, upon registration, you get a new title for each unit. The old main title is closed and the owner's corporation is established. That's the third step. At this point, each and every owner of a unit, uh, an apartment, a warehouse, a townhouse, a maisonette, each and every person at this point will get their own title to, the, to their own unit. As I said, the title will either be leasehold or freehold because it, it, ga it gains the same tenure as that, as that in the mother title that was closed. Um, and if there are any registrations on the main title, they move over to each unit title. Um, the fourth step, which is not in the law, so it's not been included in the law, but we think is a practical one that everyone needs to, 
to 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 be conscious about is the management company will probably have the old management company will probably have uh, contracts for say employees uh, security services uh, water electricity and so on and so forth those contracts will need to be transferred from the management company to the new corporation the owners corporation because the owners corporation is now the entity that is responsible for administration and management of the estate. Um, you also need to transfer any movable assets that the management company owns um, and any liabilities it, ha it has, those need to be transferred from the management company to the owner's corporation. Um, and lastly, because the management company then becomes redundant, uh, you'll need to go through a process of winding it up or having it struck off from the register, uh, the company's registry. There are various ways of achieving uh, the transfer of contracts and the transfer of movable assets. Um, and we can advise you on how to do that um, as we go along. Um, at this juncture, I would like to uh, introduce um, my colleague, Jerry Miner. Uh, Jerry will go through the details uh, of the two slides that I've just shared. So I've just given you a high level overview um, of the registration process and how conversion is to take place. And Jerry will now speak to the details. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Jerry, just before you start, Alex, one common question that's coming up is yes. whether the act applies to buildings um, or estates which are developed or to uh, the, 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 there is obviously a, a lot of developments here which are sold just as plots. So yeah. do we then avoid subdivision of plots and go under section properties or are undeveloped plots with leases not caught by this act? Thank you, Paras, for that question. Um, I've just noticed you're right. It's a question that's coming up a lot in the comment section. Um, it, technically speaking, the, the Ministry of Lands has been registering long-term leases over vacant land for a long time. This was even before um, the new constitution came into force, even before the new land laws, they used to register long-term leases over vacant land. At some point, they, they stopped and they insisted that if you're selling uh, vacant plots using long-term leases, uh, you need to do a subdivision and basically get a deed plan. Um, over time, they relaxed their rules on that again, and they continued registering uh, long-term leases over vacant, over vacant land. Now, the Section of Properties Act basically inherits whatever law was there before in terms of registration of long-term leases. Now, the law expressly permits um, long-term leases over apartments, townhouses, offices and maybe warehouses. It is quite silent on whether or not you can register long-term leases over vacant land. Um, and because of that sort of uh, gray area, um, the lands office has over, over time accepted the practice of registering long-term leases over vacant land. Um, the Section of Properties Act and the regulations created there under are basically borrowing from the same um, script in the law. So it's not very clear whether the land is, if, that, if vacant land is also regulated by the Section of Properties Act. I would imagine it is um, a strict interpretation of the law would say that you need to have a building on the piece of land uh, before you convert to section of titles. Uh, my suspicion is in practice, um, they may say, so long as you have approved building plans from the relevant county government, um, then you can proceed and register a section or title over, over your piece of land. So, so a bit of a gray area there, but I think um, practice might override what the law strictly says or what the law does not expressly restrict. Um, and therefore that, that's what's going to happen. To the extent that you have subdivided your land and you have plots uh, with their own title deeds. Each plot has its own title deed uh, from the Ministry of Lands. And it's not a long-term lease or a share in a management company that gives you the rights to, to ownership. It's actually an actual title deed from the lands office. 
then the section of properties that does not apply to you. It only applies to instances where you have one common title, which is shared by, by many people. And those people have long-term leases that entitle them to ownership of their individual units, or they have a share in the land owning, land owning company that entitles them to the individual units. Um, I hope that was, that was clear. Good. Uh, Jerry, I think it's, um, I'll now hand over to you uh, for you to take us through the details um, of, of what the law provides. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Alex. Um, if we could just move to slide nine. Okay, thanks. I'll just give in granular detail um, what Alex has told us or has discussed on registration of sectional plans. So now, um, in summary, a sectional plan must be prepared by a licensed surveyor and the sectional plan must be from the building plan that was approved by the county government. Um, there's way more detail in the regulations on, on how the sheets are to be prepared, who's to sign them. Um, they should be um, submitted in quadruplicate and, and, and more detail. Uh, but please remember the regulations are not in force yet, so we can't rely on them 100%. Um, the sectional plan must be signed by the surveyor who prepared it, the owner of the property, then endorsed by the county government that approved the building plans, then authenticated by uh, the authority responsible for surveys. So that's the director of surveys at the survey records office. Um, and this is all before presentation for registration. So now you'll see the instances where um, an owner doesn't have to be the one to apply for registration of the sectional plan. So where the application is made by, a div by, by the management company or the owners of the units, then they are the ones to sign the sectional plan. And then lastly, it has to be accompanied by an application for registration of the corporation. The application is in form SP1, I think, and it lists the owners of the units. Once the sectional plan is registered, the um, certificate of registration of the corporation comes in the name of the, sec the owners of the sectional registration number dash, which is the registration number issued by the Registrar of Lands on registration of the sectional plan. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, thanks, Njeri, for that. Um, just to add on to what Njeri um, has just explained. Um, sorry, let me just go to the next slide. To the extent that uh, the title to the piece of land is still held by the original owner of that piece of land, and say they have gone rogue and they have refused to give you the title deed so that you can go and complete the conversion to, to section of properties, or um, the management company is not keen on doing it. Um, an owner of a piece of land, uh, of, or an owner of one of the units, or the bank, to the extent that the bank uh, uh, has an interest in any one of the units, and uh, not necessarily all of them, can make an application for registration of a section of plan. The bank would obviously incur the expenses we've, we've discussed around uh, a preparation of the plan and so on and so forth. Uh, and then at the point of registration, the law expressly says that the registrar can dispense with the production of the new of the old title deed. And that will be gazetted in the Kenya Gazette and the section of, uh, section of plan will be registered and conversion process will begin. So basically they, the law provides an avenue where if you do not have the original control of the original title deed, you can still under the law ensure that you proceed to sectional titles. Jerry? Okay, let me proceed with uh, registration of sectional plans. So once the sectional plan is registered, um, as Alex said, the register of the deed file uh, relating to the main title, that's the mother title, is closed. And the main title, the original title, is surrendered to the lands registry. A separate register for every sectional unit is opened. And then the registrar issues certificates of title and certificates of lease, depending on whether the um, underlying title was freehold or leasehold, to every unit owner on payment of a fee. So now once the certificate of titles are issued, they contain obviously the area of the unit and also the share 
um, of the unit owner in the common property. So that's what um, Alex was referring to as either a 10th or a 50th, whatever share that you own in the common property is also going to be noted in your particular sectional title. And then all interests that are registered in the main title that we surrendered, that's charges, easements, cautions, any interest that has been noted on the main title is endorsed on the certificates of title that are issued in relation to the sectional units. So now um, let me cover the sale of sectional units. So now um, the mandatory requirements that have been put in the act in relation to sale and rent of sectional units. Um, developers are required to provide the following documents to prospective buyers before any sale of any sectional unit. So there's one, obviously the proposed sale agreement. There's two, the bylaws for the development. So now at the, at the point of um, registration of the sectional plan and incorporation of the corporation, there's default bylaws that are in the regulations that are deemed to apply to the corporation. However, you can go ahead and amend or submit your own peculiar set of bylaws. So those bylaws must be um, availed to prospective buyers. And then if there's any management agreement or recreational agreement in relation to management of common areas or rec recreational facilities, then this needs to be um, given to buyers as well. The main title for the property or the sectional title, if conversion has already been done, needs to be submitted and a charge if there's a charge registered against the main title. So you'll notice there's an asterisk on the charge because there's more detail that needs to be given. And I'll talk about it in the next slide where there's actually a charge registered against the main title. And finally, the sectional plan slash proposed section, um, sectional plan. So now it's because it's mandatory to provide this documents to prospective buyers, non-compliance attracts a fine of 20 million Kenya shillings on a developer or imprisonment for one year for the develop the developers officers. Um, next slide, please. Now for finance developers, and this is where there's a charge registered against the main title over and above the documents I've listed in the previous slide, the developer also needs to provide this information in a sort of notice to prospective buyers. And this is all before um, the units are sold. So that notice needs to contain the information um, in that slide, and that's the principal amount secured by the charge, the installments payable under the charge by the developer, the amortization period, the term of the loan, the interest rate, and any privileges on prepayment of the loan. Again, this is a mandatory um, requirement on developers. For Sorry, rent, Jerry, just, yes. Jerry, just on that, um, mm -hmm. going back to that. So when uh, the unit holder buys this, at the completion of that purchase, yes. do we get the same uh, partial discharges that we were getting now or, or how does that work? Or is that still a gray area? Yes, you will get a partial discharge, but essentially it will be a discharge of charge because it will be in relation to your sectional title. Yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, let's go to renting of sectional units. That's slide 13. So now there's also requirements that have been placed on owners of sectional units before they rent out to third party tenants. So one, you must give a notice to the corporation of your intention to let out the unit and the regulation contains the time periods within which these notices must be given. It, in the notice, you must also undertake as an owner of the, of the sectional unit, you must also undertake to the corporation to be liable for any damages that are caused to the unit by the tenant and where the tenant vacates the premise, you must give a NAR notice to the corporation that the unit is no longer rented out. This is a new requirement and it's just one of the, of the, of the, of the powers that we see of the corporation that uh, the man, a management company didn't have previously, where a tenant contravenes the bylaws, the corporation is actually entitled to give the tenant notice to vacate the unit. And this is without the sectional unit owner's um, consent. They can do it with or without their consent. I will hand over to Alex to proceed with conversion of existing long-term leases. Thank you, Jerry, for that. Um, thank you. That was quite useful. Uh, in terms of conversion of existing long-term long -term leases, 
um, the leases need to be converted by 28th of December 2022. Uh, so it looks like 2022 will be a big year for owners of land and politicians. Um, there will be conversion uh, that may be initiated by the developer management company or a, an owner of a unit as we discussed. If you had paid stamp duty on your lease, which you must have if it's already registered, then no additional stamp duty is payable on conversion. Um, um, the registrar can register a restriction against the main title to prevent further dealings if conversion is not undertaken within the prescribed period. So when it comes to uh, when, when, the, when we get to 28th December 2022, any, any underlying title which has long-term leases registered on it will have a restriction registered by the land's office to prevent any further uh, dealing. So the owners of those, those long-term leases will not be able say, to charge their property, to transfer it and so on and so forth. Um, as we said, where, where a property or unit is charged, the application for conversion can be made by the developer, uh, but it can also be submitted by the bank. Um, uh, to the extent that the conversion process hasn't taken place, even after 28th of December 2022, uh, the law expressly says that that does not of itself uh, invalidate any security that the bank has on the piece of land. So there is a compliance requirement. Um, there is a penalty for not complying, but those two items do not affect the security the bank has over, over its piece of land or over a unit or, or a, or a long-term lease. Um, the conversion process, as we discussed, conversion is effected by submitting a section of plan. Uh, it needs to be accompanied by uh, the section of plan needs to be accompanied by long-term leases that have already been registered. The original main title, to the extent that you have it in your control. If the title is not readily available, uh, there is a form of an indemnity to be issued. And once indemnity, that indemnity is issued, the registrar will gazette that they are going ahead with registration of the section of plan, notwithstanding that they don't have the original title deed with them. Um, and then, and then the, once the registration of the section of plan happens, then uh, each unit owner will have their own title deed. Uh, freehold, if the land is freehold. Leasehold, if the main land was leasehold. Um, and the title deed will come out in the name of the unit owner. Um, again, as we discussed, the corporation is not subject to the provisions of the Companies Act. You remember, there are two things that happen on registration of a section of plan. On the one hand, you have the title, new title deed for each unit, and at the same time, there is an owner's corporation that is created. Um, so this corporation is not regulated by the Companies Act. Um, the application of, for registration of uh, the corporation is uh, to be made using um, Form SP1, which has been provided in the law. The corporation will have a unique naming series, uh, and the naming series is basically based on the registration number of the section of plan. So if the section of plan is section of plan number 83 of 2012, then the corporation will be called the owners, the owners comma section of plan number 2012. Um, uh, and that's it. So, so uh, we will no longer have the option of having our own um, uh, names that we've created for purposes of of having a common entity. Um, the bylaws that are that are prescribed prescribed in the reg regulations are what apply as a default, unless you want to have your own bylaws. In which case, they need to be submitted at the same time uh, when you're applying for registration. The corporation shall not carry out any trading activities. So it's a, also a very similar uh, uh, obligation we had on management companies. They were only going to manage the estates uh, and not and not undertake any any trading trading activities. Um, there are specific duties of the corporation which have been imposed by the by the default bylaws that are there in the law. Uh, so it's insurance of the buildings and common property, um, managing and administering the common property, 
uh, maintaining a fund for the expenses. Uh, there's still the, the corporation still has to approve any disposition, transfer, sale, lease, charge, affecting affecting the common property. So so in this instance, while technically what this means is if I have a title deed and a section of properties for unit number two out of 10 units, I have a title deed for my own piece of land. But remember we said that title deed includes a share in the common areas. And that share is a 10th or a 15th, uh, depending on what number of units you have there. So because you have to transfer the title and also transfer that undivided share, uh, the management company has the power to approve the transfer or lease affecting the common property. Uh, there will be a board of management that will be established that will be akin to a, uh, the board of directors of a company. Uh, but in addition to that, the law has imposed a mandatory committee called the Internal Dispute Resolutions Committee, um, which can sit on a need, need basis. Uh, the Internal Disputes Resolution Committee will deal with uh, disputes that are between owners uh, of units in the apartment, uh, sorry, in the, in the estate. And also uh, if there's a dispute between the, the corporation and any one member or, or, or all of the members, depending on what the dispute is about. To the extent that uh, you are in breach or you have failed to pay any money due to the corporation, um, and I believe this targets largely service charge, uh, the corporation has the legal right to register a, a, a caution or a caveat as we normally call it. Uh, again, it's your individual title for not for not paying service charge. So effectively, what that means is you will not be able to deal with your sectional title, title deed for your unit, unless uh, you pay all the dues you have to the corporation and and the and, and the and the caution or caveat is lifted. Um, um, I don't know if Paras, you have Alex, any just, comment before I hand over Alex, to my guest. Yeah, Alex, just interrupting, going back to the corporations, a number of questions have arisen. Um, the first one is, uh, I think you've touched on it a little bit, but who will manage or who will effectively be the board of directors of that corporation? And I guess that's a matter for, for, for the bylaws, but maybe you can touch on that a little bit. The second one is uh, currently management companies have to keep accounts and file tax returns. Um, uh, and I'm assuming the corporation will be in a similar status, so we'll have to apply for a PIN number and do the same. Um, the third one is uh, for existing developments which have to convert, uh, the cost of the conversion uh, to prepare the plans and do the registration and wind up the management company and all that, uh, one would assume will have to be borne by that management company and, and, and be raised by the unit holders. Uh, assuming that the developers are out of those developments. Of course, for those that are new developments that are going on, the developers will, will probably have to take care of this uh, process. And then lastly, uh, there's, there is a lot of excitement created by this uh, for existing unit holders. But just to reiterate that we do have time for this to pan out and for the regulations to specifically come out for existing developments. So there is really no no, you know, no one should really rush to start doing this today, today, but uh, perhaps you can guide us on, on what you anticipate the timing is. Sorry, there's a, a number of questions. No problem, Paras. Thank you so much. Um, I'll start with the first one. Um, in terms of management of, um, of the corporation, uh, the bylaws expressly require you to have, as I discussed a short while ago, a board of management, and that basically is akin to a board of directors. So those will be say five, seven, 10, 11 people uh, who sit as a board uh, and not necessarily, it's, it's not supposed to be all the unit holders that sit uh, as the board. So it, it adopts a similar structure to a company where you have a board and you have shareholders. So everyone is an owner in the, in the corporation, but not everyone necessarily needs to sit on the board of management. So that's the structure that, that, that they have put in. Uh, the law requires you to maintain um, accounts which need to be audited. Um, and for that purpose, because you are, you are the corporation is a legal entity um, with separate identity and ability to, 
to sue and get sued and enter into contracts in, in its own name, uh, it will also be required to register for a PIN number. Um, there, is, there is a more, uh, more sensitive issue around the cost of conversion. Um, what, what, what the notice that was published by the minister says is that the government will take care of those costs, the costs of conversion. Um, but it's very, it's quite unclear on, on what that means and which costs are these that they are going to take care of. Um, they talk about the costs of preparation of the, of the section of plan, which is the, which is the genesis of the registration. Um, but we don't know how efficient that is going to be. Um, and it might, it might end up being a situation where you're probably better suited to get your own uh, professionals to, to do that and you pay them rather than waiting on the list for, for whenever the government gets ready uh, and time, time is passing. Um, so those, those, are the main, um, those are the main answers to, to the questions you've posed for us. And, and sorry, just the last one, Alex, on timing for existing developers, there is, uh, I don't think there is a rush to do it today, today, is there? No, no there isn't. Actually, uh, we would say we watch it for another, we watch this, the situation evolve for maybe, for maybe another, uh, another one month or so. Um, we've had meetings with, with the Ministry of Land, and when I say we, I mean the Law Society of Kenya. Um, initially, initially, the notice issued by the minister said, with effect from 10th of May, um, no more long-term leases will be registered. However, having had an extensive meeting and discussion with the minister, who was quite receptive actually to the concerns raised by the Law Society of Kenya, uh, what was agreed at that meeting, and, and we are waiting to see how that will be implemented, but what was agreed in that meeting is to the extent that you have an existing development, um, an estate where, where you have already registered at least one long-term lease, you'd be permitted to uh, continue registering long-term leases in the medium, in the short to medium term, but at some point you'll be asked to 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 convert those into section of properties. Uh, to the extent that you have a lease that's not registered, but it's been assessed for stamp duty, uh, or stamp duty has been paid and 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 noted on the on the tight, on the long-term lease, but you haven't lodged for registration. Then again, similar situation, you'll be permitted to register your lease. Um, and then at some point you'll be required to convert. Now, to the extent that you don't have even a single lease um, that has been registered, stamped, or even assessed for payment of stamp duty, uh, the view taken is you haven't yet taken a significant step towards registration of a long-term lease. And therefore you will be required to uh, immediately uh, register a section of plan if you're going to be selling any of those units or transferring them to third parties. So to the extent your project has, don't, doesn't have a single lease registered or none of the leases has been assessed for stamp duty uh, or, or, or none of the leases have stamp duty paid on them, then uh, you can only uh, transfer ownership of a unit by way of uh, sectional titles. So, so for those who are still early on in their development projects, it looks like you, you, will still, you will have to do your sales under the Section of Properties Act. For those who have existing leases registered and, uh, um, and the sales are ongoing, um, then you'll be permitted to continue registering long-term leases against that specific title deed, um, against that specific title deed with a requirement for you to convert to uh, section of titles by December 2022. Uh, for, for specific projects, because I know there will be nuances for specific projects, uh, happy for you to get in touch with us by email or telephone. Uh, we would understand your situation and then we'll be able to tell you whether it's one where you have, have to convert immediately if you're, you want to do a sale or it's one where you can register the long-term leases. Thanks, Alex. I think let's uh, the, 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 the clock has turned to 12. Uh, we can continue for a few more minutes with the challenges and the last slide. Uh, Cornelius, if yeah. you do that, and then and then we can do a wrap up. Thank you, Cornelius. Thanks, Alex and Paras. Um, I, I think, you know, as we've gone through 
uh, the presentation, I think some of the challenges that uh, we, we are discussing now have, have become apparent. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges we have is the fact that uh, the, the act is being operationalized without the regulations being in place. Uh, so even if you wanted to, for instance, convert uh, your long-term leases, you do not know how, how that, how exactly that's going to be done. Uh, and we, we hope that the ministry will deal with that. Uh, there, there are other challenges that have cropped up. Uh, for, for instance, you will find uh, there are developments that uh, have been completed. Uh, people have purchased uh, units in those developments. Some of them did it by cash. Uh, others were financed uh, by, by various financial institutions. How you merge uh, all these interests uh, of, you know, everybody that is involved, the financiers who are different financiers, the different buyers, the developer, for, for them to agree for this conversion to be done. Uh, and, and we all know that when banks have financed uh, purchase of units, they are the ones who are going to be holding the leases, uh, which, which now require to be, to, to be amended to, to be in line with uh, the provisions of the Land Registration Act and the Land Act. So that, that's, that is going to be interesting to see how, how, how the ministry expects that to be, to be sorted out. Uh, and another issue is enforcement of uh, charges. Uh, in, in cases where the banks have taken a charge of a, a long-term lease, uh, now going forward, uh, any attempts to enforce that and transfer those leases to, to, uh, to a buyer in an auction or in a, in a private treaty, that, that's also going to have its own challenges because the ministry uh, wants everybody to move towards a uh, section of property. So it's going to be very difficult for, for banks to be able to enforce that. Uh, again, banks, you know, may have financed developments uh, with the, the expectation that um, the, the debt is going to be serviced via sale of, uh, of, of units. Uh, some of those units that are being sold are expected to be charged to other financiers. Uh, now, if, if this conversion has not been done and therefore registrations cannot be done, then there'll be some cash uh, held up in, in those sort of transactions. Uh, and developers may have challenges in, in, uh, in servicing their debts. Uh, again, there, there, there are developers who've, you know, who've ma managed to get buyers uh, to, to buy their units, but these buyers are mortgage buyers. They've made their applications to the banks. The mortgages may have been approved or are in the process of being approved. Uh, but now this challenge has come in. You know, the, the government is now saying we can't, you, you can't register long-term leases anymore. Uh, so, so again, what, what do we do with those mortgage applications? Uh, and and what, 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 what is the developer supposed to do? Because the buyer is likely to now default uh, on, 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 on what they had agreed on. And I, I think as we had alluded uh, in, in the beginning, there is this deal that seems to have been struck between the LSK and, and the Ministry of Lands. Uh, but the Ministry of Lands has been quiet as to whether they have accepted that. Uh, I think in the coming days, we will be able to tell whether the Ministry will be accepting registration of leases. I think I, I have gotten the sense that they still are accepting some of the leases. Uh, but as has been the case with the Ministry, you know, they could accept it today and then tomorrow they do not. So, you know, we, it, it would be good if the Ministry could just come out clearly and, and, and say whether this deal that they struck with the Law Society of Kenya is, is a deal that they accept. Um, then then there's, there's one additional, I think, uh, issue that Alex has raised, which is that the, the, under the Act, they are proposing that if by 2022, uh, the conversion has not been done, the Ministry will place a, a, a restriction on the title. Uh, now, again, that, that, that will, will, will only punish uh, the property owners and their financiers because they, they now can't deal in the property it's really not going to be punishing uh, the developers. So again, the ministry needs to think around, around that. I, I am not also very convinced that the, the ministry will be able to do these conversions by 2022 in any event. Uh, I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, so again, the question is if, if we get to 2022 and conversions haven't happened simply because the ministry can't handle this, then, then how, how, how do you deal with that? Uh, so those are, those are the few, some of the few challenges we have we have picked up. I think there, there are a lot of uh, challenges with, with the implementation. And, you know, as we have said, we are, we are working with the ministry to try and resolve some of this. Uh, and hopefully we will manage to do that. Jerry, we could do the last slide. 
Sorry, just before you do, Polias, one, one question that has also come um, by many people is what happens to mixed use developments, for example, Garden City, Tattoo City, Two Rivers, etc., cetera, um, which are possibly under one large title with an office block and a hotel and an apartment block and so on. Uh, I'm assuming you might not have a straight answer for that, but uh, that, that's something that is maybe going to create challenges because you might need multiple corporations or multiple titles. If you have initial thoughts on that, that'll be useful. Otherwise, we can we can maybe do another alert on that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yes, you can obviously do that. But yes, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, and and I, I, I know what has been happening. I, I know at least for Garden City, but I, I, I would expect for many other uh, multiple use. What 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 they, they've been doing is you, you do a long term lease over a certain portion of land, which is then designated to be either commercial, others to be residential. So again, the question is, will we be required to surrender even those long term leases? Uh, on, on which units have now been have been, have now been registered against. So it's it, it's going to be very difficult to, to 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 know how exactly the minister the ministry proposes to do this, and we we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks. Yeah, Jerry. Uh, yes, I, I think on on the way forward, uh, what what we are advising, and these are just initial thoughts because you know all, all these issues are are, are are cropping up now. Is I, I think as far as developers are concerned, uh, in cases where perhaps the developer has sold out uh, their units, the development is done, uh, may, may be the best thing for the developer to do would be to now transfer the reversionary interest back to, or rather to, to transfer the reversionary interest to the management company and then uh, let the management company deal with uh, the issue of conversion uh, as and when that, that is possible. Uh, I, 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 I know there are instances where the management company, where the developer feels that they can't transfer the reversionary interest because uh, they have not managed to sell all the units. Uh, now, again, they are, they are, the, the developer, what we, we think the developer may want to do is to transfer those units uh, themselves so that they can allow for, for the transfer of reversionary interest and then the management company can take over the issue of conversion. Uh, for, for banks, uh, I, I think going forward, obviously the bank will want, or it, it would be ideal if the bank could insist on these issues of section of, of section of plans being prepared uh, in advance of them financing the development or, or, or having a clear idea of how this is going to be done uh, so that they don't get stuck uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in, in the future. Uh, where they have already financed certain developments, uh, then you know, they, they may want to work with the, the borrower or with the developer, wh whoever it is that they have uh, financed, just, just to see how the conversion process is being done. I think the, the banks would want to now have a clear view of, of how these conversions are going to be done, because as, as we have discussed under the challenges, I think it is going to affect the, their ability to enforce their, their securities. Yeah, and, and Cornelius, I would just probably add for those who are in the middle of transactions, uh, obviously, you need to speak to your lawyers, whichever side you're on, whether you're the seller or the buyer, um, uh, for, for these units uh, and build certain provisions into the agreement to cater for the conversion process. Um, uh, again, we can help with that if you want, uh, but, but that's probably another constituency of uh, a lot of people in the country who, who are in the middle of transactions and uh, should take uh, specific advice on, on the plans and the agreement and so on and so forth. Um, that uh, brings us to the end of our presentation. This is just the first presentation of what will be a series of presentations on the, on the Sectional Properties Act as things unfold um, and as regulations come in and practice develops. We will be holding specific seminars uh, for financiers, uh, for developers, uh, so watch out for that, please. Uh, we. There are a lot of questions that have been posed on the uh, on the chat function here. Uh, what we will do is compile those questions and produce a Q&A uh, sheet, which will circulate to all those who have attended uh, this webinar. If you have attended, uh, uh, please also send your email address to your contact at uh, uh, at Bowman so we can we can contact you. Uh, but we will circulate a, a, a kind of a summary of of the answers. Uh, as well as this presentation uh, to all those who have attended today. 
lastly, I will say that we have uh, also created a special email address for sectional properties, uh, sectionalproperties at bowmanslaw.com. If you have any queries, please send an email to that uh, address and we will try and get back to you. If you need specific advice, um, you can also contact any one of us or any of your contacts at the law firm and we will uh, try and assist as much as we can. Uh, but there is a lot happening. Uh, this is just a, a, an introduction to what is happening uh, and we will keep you informed of uh, the developments as, as, as we go along uh, in the next uh, few weeks and months. Uh, so now um, I'd just like to thank all our guests. Uh, we have close to 200 guests and I thank all of you for taking uh, time today to attend our webinar. I hope you found it uh, of use to you uh, and, and information useful. Uh, I'd also like to thank my colleagues, uh, Jerry, Alex, Cornelius, and the uh, Elizabeth and the, the IT team here to, to, who, has, who have assisted in, uh, in putting this together in a very short space of time. Uh, and I look forward to the next uh, webinar where uh, we will uh, continue our discussions on this topic. For now, have a, have a great day. Uh, please stay safe and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you very much, everyone.